I'm just going to look at you all for a little bit here, and uh, yeah, I can't tell you how good it feels to be up here, to see so many of you in church today. It feels good. It brings great joy to my heart to have so many of you in this place after a very, very long year. I give thanks to God for all of you. Those of you in this space, and those of you at home, thank you for loving your church and loving your, your Lord. That's it. We're done. <laughs> oh. uh, there, good morning. Seriously, it, it, it feels so good, really good to be here with you today. Um, I'm excited. I feel good. My heart is full. I hope yours uh, is full and that it gets fuller as we progress through this morning. Uh, today, of course, we will be having our annual meeting following service. Uh, for those of you who are visiting, you're welcome to stick around, but uh, you wouldn't be able to participate in any vote or anything like that, but you're welcome to see how uh, things operate. If you do have, uh, if you picked up a copy of the annual report from last week, uh, pick up a new copy. We had some errors in there, so we have an updated version uh, the newest one says amended uh, at the bottom of the, the pages, so please note that. Uh, there's also the agenda out there as well, and we'll move into that business following our time uh, of worship. Uh, coming up this week, we'll have confirmation again uh, this Wednesday. Uh, the winter book study we met last Thursday had a good start. If you're interested in that Love Undocumented book, uh, it's really great. It's really accessible. Uh, I think uh, you'd get a lot out of it. We'll be meeting a couple more times via Zoom to talk about that. Uh, looking forward, in a few weeks, it's almost Lent. Ash Wednesday is almost here. We will have two services that day. We'll do morning and evening, 11 a.m. and then 7 p.m. At both services, I will be offering the imposition of ashes. And then uh, communion will be offered to go in the morning and the evening service. Those who are here will have the option to commune. Uh, in person or to take that to go as well. Uh, my thought with doing the morning service would be a good opportunity for those who don't care to drive at night uh, to come to church and then also maybe some of our older members who have not yet felt comfortable coming back to church to have uh, a, a morning service that's a little lighter and we can space out. And so uh, I hope to see a lot of you on Ash Wednesday. And then you'll see our midweek Lenten services schedule in the bulletin there. Uh, we will be doing the, uh, the worship rotation midweek. Uh, we won't be doing soup suppers this year, um, but please know we will be worshiping as a community in that way. And if you go to worship at one of the other congregations, please be sure to observe uh, their uh, guidelines and protections for gathering and spacing and those things. So, uh, yeah, that's it for now. So again, I'm very thankful for all of you here. Thank you, Nancy, for playing for us. Uh, we'll move together into our service as we sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
please stand. We've gathered this day in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he grants the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. be with you. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son. Jesus Christ, Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for our readings.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our first test, uh, lesson is from the Old Testament in the fourth Sunday after Epiphany from Deuteronomy chapter 18. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God anymore or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that I, the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. Here ends the lesson. Our psalm for today is Psalm 111. Please respond to the print in bold. Praise the Lord, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great, Great are the works, works of the Lord, Lord studied by, by all who Lord. delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has he gained renown by his wonderful, wonderful deeds. deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Our second lesson, our New Testament lesson, is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Now concerning food sacrifice to idols, we know all that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, in one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So, by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. Here ends the lesson. <laughs> Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes did. 
Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of the man. And all were amazed. They kept saying and asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the region surrounding the Galilee. The Gospel of our Lord. Together, let us confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He had ascended into heaven. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. Peace and grace to you, friends, from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have a short gospel lesson for today, only eight verses, but there's a lot in there uh, for us to consider. Broadly speaking, the theme for today is about authority. The question of authority will come up again and again as we go through Mark's gospel, where we'll find Jesus' adversaries uh, questioning his authority, wondering what the his claim to authority is, where it comes from, and at times wrongly assuming that Jesus' authority comes from somewhere other than on high, other than God Almighty. But today in our lesson, we're still in the first chapter of Mark. It's early in the gospel, uh, as he tells it. Jesus is just arrived on the scene, and he's uh, a relative unknown at this point. And in this scene... Mark depicts for us those who uh, witness Jesus' teaching and the casting out of the Spirit as uh, people who are not yet dubious, not yet skeptical of Jesus, but rather wholly amazed by him. Those gathered in the story were astounded. They were amazed at what they had seen and heard. And that astonishment is really twofold. On the one hand, it has to do with the way in which Jesus taught, and then on the other hand is how Jesus seems to command that which uh, surpasses human ability. But typically, on the Sabbath in the synagogue, uh, there would be a series of readings. Someone would get up, uh, typically a, a man, uh, an elder in the community would read from a scroll, and then perhaps... Uh, offer some commentary on it, but not their own. Usually it would be someone uh, reciting what teachers in the past had said. Rabbi so-and-so said this. Rabbi so-and-so said that. So the people teaching in the synagogues aren't really adding anything new. Rather, they're just, uh, in a sense, regurgitating or reciting what others had known. And then Jesus comes in and he opens the scriptures and he teaches from them pointing not to some other precedent, but teaching the scripture in a new and different way. And this was radical at the time, and this is part of why people were so amazed at Jesus recasting what they had taken as a given. Think about a, the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus says, you have heard it said so and so. Well, I say to you, right, undoing what people had previously thought. So Jesus is teaching in a radically new way. And the people are amazed at this, at the authority which he claims. 
But they're not just amazed by it. They're inspired by him. The way Jesus taught and what he taught triggered something within them, sparked something within them. Being a dynamic teacher, being a dynamic rabbi is no doubt part of why Jesus' fame continued to spread. But it's also due in part to this other uh, amazing thing that happened. Jesus showing authority over the supernatural world. Jesus uh, casting out this unclean spirit certainly drives up Jesus' stock in the eyes of the people because it is like unlike anything they had seen in some time. We find Jesus within Mark's gospel repeating this, this kind of scene over and over again. Jesus teaching and then following that teaching up with some kind of mighty act, a, a healing, an exorcism, some kind of restoration of people's bodies. We find Jesus healing the sick, bringing sight to the blind, right? And Jesus even seems to command the seas themselves. We find as we go through Mark's gospel that Jesus, the authority of Jesus is not limited merely to scripture, but to both the natural and the supernatural world. Now, I will admit to you, when I encounter stories like the one today where we find Jesus casting out demons and unclean spirits, uh, I stumble a little bit. These demonic images and perceptions and spiritual warfare, I struggle with these kinds of things. It doesn't really fit into my own uh, theology. I don't take to medieval depictions of little creatures with distorted faces and pointed tails and horns. And I, I struggle to take that seriously in my post-enlightenment modern worldview. And yet I cannot deny the fact that there are in the world forces which seek to defy God, which see, seem to be contrary to the will of God, that work against the kingdom of God. There are forces that seek to silence the word of God, that seek to diminish human life, and to prevent it from, from flourishing. We affirm the truth of this in our baptismal rites. We have the profession of faith as part of that rite, which is twofold. On the one hand, we proclaim our, fest, our faith in the triune God, right? We, we state that we believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But we, before we pronounce what we believe, we renounce the forces that defy God. We renounce the devil and the forces that defy God. We renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God. And we renounce the ways of sin that draw us from God. In essence, we renounce the very things that Jesus set out to destroy. Jesus comes into the world working to overcome and bring an end to those forces which work against God's will. And those forces know it. In the gospel for today, the unclean spirit cries out, asks, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? Yet the unclean spirit already knows the answer to that question. It knows, in fact, that Jesus has come to destroy it. Jesus comes and he, he casts out that unclean spirit, removing it from this man, thus destroying the power it held over that man's life. In, ca in casting out the unclean spirit, Jesus liberates this man from the destructive forces that sought to control and diminish his life. And this is important to remember. Yes, Jesus displays his power and authority over the natural and unsupernatural world, and we should be in awe of this and astounded by this, just as the people were that day. But we need to also remember that it's not merely about Jesus showing power for the sake of showing power. He's not just showing off here 
Say, look at me, what I can do. It's not power for power's sake. But it is intended to reveal the power of God, the power of God's word to liberate God's people from the forces that seek to limit their lives, to destroy their lives. Time and time again, we find Jesus doing this work, this liberating work, this freeing of humanity from the forces that seek to prevent the fullness of life. We see Jesus confronting the forces that defy God, that deny God. And we see him setting people free from their bondage so that they may live most fully. We see it in the casting out of unclean spirits and demons. We see it in the healings he performed and the restoration of sight to the blind, curing illnesses, curing leprosy, right? Uh, Stopping this woman from bleeding who bled for 30 years, right? Restoring her life, freeing her from that which prevented her from living into the full, abundant life that God offers. We see it, too, in Jesus' inclusion of those who were thought to be outside of God's grace, bringing those people in. We see it in the Samaritan woman at the well, at the centurion. We see it in the criminal on the cross who Jesus promises will join him in paradise that day. We see the power of God's liberating word in the, word in the words Jesus himself spoke, in the things he taught. The gospel of Jesus, the good news of Jesus, sets men and women free from the forces that seek to diminish and destroy our lives, whether those forces come from within us or without us. If we want to be set free, set free from the things that bind us, that hold us in bondage, the things that separate us from God, that separate us from one another, if we want to be free, we must Turn to the one who came to set us free. We need to turn to the one who has power over both the natural and the supernatural world. We need to turn ourselves over to Christ our Lord. For if the Son sets us free, we will indeed be free. The man in our story today was bound or by an unclean spirit. In ways big and small, we too have our own unclean spirits. You think of Psalm 51, right? Create a new and right spirit within me. Our acts of confession, right? As I spoke a few weeks ago, uh, do that spiritual cleansing, cleaning out our hearts, right? Being set free from the things that hold us back. We all have those things we'd like to be cleaned of. When we gather before the cross and we make our confession, we have those things we list to ourselves that we dare not utter aloud, but that we want to be freed from nonetheless. And if we come before the cross, rather if you turn to Christ anywhere, at any time, at any point, and open your heart to him, and ask to be set free, he will grant you your plea. And he will set you free. And you will be able to live, and to love, to rejoice in the abundant life God has prepared for us, for you and for me. Let us be astounded by God's mighty works, by God's mighty word, 
Let us be astounded by our Lord. Let us be amazed and in awe of what our Lord has done and continues to do for us. Amen. by the power of God's Holy Spirit to be the church of Christ here on earth. Let us pray for God's church, God's world, and those children of God in need. Our petitions this day will end with, Hear us, O God. Please respond with, Your mercy is great. Let us pray. Almighty God, Your mighty word goes forth into creation revealing your power over things seen and unseen. That same word grants freedom to those in bondage to sin and the forces of this world. May we, your servants, proclaim your mighty word that all the world may be set free, that all may rejoice and sing your praise. Hear us, O God. Mercy Mercy is great. maker of heaven and earth. By your word, creation came into being. By that same word, you command the forces of nature and the elements obey. Bring forth favorable weather for farmers throughout the world. Raise up faithful stewards to care for air, water, and soil. May we offer the same tender care to the earth that you offered to us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of justice and peace, your Son cast out those forces that sought to diminish and destroy human life, setting your children free. While you have won the initial victory on the cross, we know such forces persist in our world, springing forth from our hearts, from unjust and corrupt systems and power, and from those who would defy your word and your will. Help us to renounce, resist, and overturn such forces that your kingdom may draw near. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
great liberator. In your mercy, your son freed your children from sickness, possession, and death. May you set free those held captive by, by illness, by suffering and grief. Bring relief to those we name aloud before you now or silently in our hearts. We pray for this day also, Lord, for Leslie, the grandfather of Laura Enger, who now rests in you. May he rest eternally in your grace, bring comfort to his wife Marlene, to his family and friends, and be with all those who mourn this day. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that knits us together with you and with one another as the people of First Lutheran. As we prepare to do the work of our annual meeting, may your Holy Spirit be with us and upon us. Help us to be faithful in our, in our business, in our discernment, and in the ways we love and serve one another. Bless our congregation. Sustain us, Lord, as we serve you, your world, and one another. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is, great. is great. And to your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Together, let us pray as our Lord and Savior has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, dear friends, one, uh, one final announcement to make. It is Giving Hearts Day, uh, not this Thursday, but next, the 11th. So I encourage you to... Uh, to help someone, uh, help our friends here at the Heart Program in town, uh, give to them, consider the Eastern North Dakota Synod or any uh, nonprofit that is close to you. Uh, may you uh, give generously on giving Heart Stay in all days. Now, as we prepare uh, to move out of worship into the annual meeting, to wherever you may go, may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's face. Shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord look upon us with kindness and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
shine brightly and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.